Hey everyone, it's Mr. Seller coming at you with a video about Unit 3, Lesson 6, uh, called Polymorphism. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to write an enhanced for loop to traverse through a one-dimensional array and print the result of those as we access each element. So let's get started. First thing I would recommend doing is um, taking a look at the code that exists there. We have Business Runner. And, oh, I should have stated earlier, this is for Module 7 within Lesson 6. There's four choices. I just went with Employee. In this one, we're going to try and get the name and salary for each employee. Nice thing about this one, there's no text file, so I don't have to use the array manager uh, method from earlier lessons. Um, so take a look at, for a minute, just evaluate what code is already there. First thing I see is business runner is our main class or tester class. There is a one-dimensional array that's already been created. And you'll recall from earlier lessons that this is a new, um, basically a one-dimensional array of multiple objects. So we have two employee objects and one manager object. And you can see the arguments here on how they're being um, initialized or instantiated. Then we have a, from a business class, we have a business object called tech company that's going to go ahead and take in that one-dimensional array and use the constructor to assign those values to the tech company object. Last thing we need to do here is just print it. Okay, so taking a look at kind of going down the line, we have business class, which um, is take creating a one-dimensional array. And really pay attention here. We have that the array, instead of using string or int or double, those primitive data types, what it's doing is it's looking at the employee class. And the employee class, this is where the guts or information about an employee is created. We have a variable for name. We have a variable for base salary. So this is probably going to be pretty important to use. And then on the other side, we have manager.java which is a subclass of employee, but it is dealing with presumably a manager of the company as opposed to just a straight up employee. I noticed from the constructor, we're taking the name and base salary versus the manager, we're gonna take name, salary, and it's going to take in a bonus for these managers. I see an accessor method for get name, I see a sal uh, accessor method for salary, and I should see the same thing here for get name, get salary. Okay, so all that's really cool. So now I know that um, business is looking at that employee class, right? And it's going to go ahead and take in that employee class one dimensional array and assign it to the object. Okay, here's the two do's. Um, we're going to traverse the 1D array of employees and concatenate each employee's name and salary to result on separate lines. Okay, so remember that toString is going to go ahead and print the values of that object. Now, let's say you're doing this and you're getting, well, I, mean, I should say, whenever you see the word traverse, you should automatically think while or for loop. That is the only way, at least in this class, that we're able to access each element of a one-dimensional array and do something with it, modify it, whatever. You'll notice that in my two-string method um, that code.org provided, we have a string a data type a variable called result, which has nothing in it so far. We're going to return that. So what I need to do is I need to populate result with the values from the one-dimensional array. Okay, so really important here, we need to take a look at what their example is. Otherwise, we're going to fail the test. Um, so what they want me to do is they want me to write the two string method and it has to contain each employee's name and salary. And keeping in mind the format here, we have every uh, name separated by a hyphen dollar sign, right? And it's a new line each time. Okay. Um, and they kind of put that in bold. So hint, hint, we need to do that. So let's go and get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I need to use a for loop. Now the question always becomes, well, should I use the enhanced for loop or the regular for loop? In this case, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to access each element of a one-dimensional array, I don't need to worry about controlling it in terms of do I want to access the first three things or the last three things or the middle three, do I want to access every other element? We don't have to do that. So what we're going to do essentially is we're going to create this enhanced for loop, and it's going to say for whatever the array is, I don't care what you call it, I'll just call it array, uh, for each element of this array that's already created here in this, which is employees, I basically want to map on those uh, elements of the employees onto this other copy of an array, if you will. Okay. Now, in order for me to use this enhanced for loop, the first thing I have to do is I have to put in some sort of data type here before I put the array in. Now, for the data type here, pay attention to the employee's one dimensional array. Okay. Because that's where basically what we're doing is we're taking, we're saying for each value of or each element of employees, uh, 1D array, we want to copy that over to our uh, copy of an array and do something for each one. That allows us to not have to type in all that code for int index equals zero, run this thing till we reach the end of the uh, array, et cetera, et cetera. 
right? So this is a much more efficient piece of code you can write. So in order to do this for the data type, I'm going to try and mirror what employees is doing. And for employees, we're looking at the employee class. So I'm going to go ahead and put that data type here in front of my array. You just call it a copy. Yeah. So now the question becomes, I'm getting this copy done. What are we going to do with it? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, results uh, because that's created. And we're going to go ahead and do plus equals. That allows me to concatenate each value that's going to come in here. Now, remember, there's this is the hard part. We have to pay attention to the fact that we're looking at the employee name separated by a hyphen and a dollar sign. Okay, I'm going to take a quick look at Business Runner, and I'll notice that there, because these are INTs, right? There's these integers don't have a dollar sign in front of it. The minute I put a dollar sign in front of it, that becomes a text. So you want to keep that in mind. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to we want to find the value of the employees. So I'm going to do employees bracket index. So in theory, I would want to get whatever the value is for that first element of my for loop. There's just one problem though. If you go to employee.java, the value for employees, when you actually take a look at the array, it's not as simple as, hey, it has just the employee name. Well, remember, it has a name and a base salary attached to each employee object. So that makes it a little bit harder, right? So when I try to use employee bracket index, there's going to be a problem there. What I can do, though, is because we're looking at the employee class, I can go ahead and use um, the uh, this to get the... Um, name of the employee. So that's totally okay. Now, here's the other thing too. We're not running a regular for loop. So actually, what's even more efficient is I don't need that index value. So that's kind of nice. So I should be able to just use employees because it's for each element of employees. Go ahead and get the name for them. Okay, and we're going to concatenate with quotation marks because there's a space, a hyphen, a space, and a dollar sign in between. Do a concatenation again. And now we want to do the same thing for employees, but this time we want to get salary. And that's a method that's created here in employee, in case you weren't sure. Right. So I made it made it a point to bring out that accessor method. Okay, so we're going to get salary. And I'm going to spell it correctly. And there's nothing in the parentheses. And then at the very end, I'm going to do another concatenation um, because we need to go ahead and make a new line there, which we'll do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this just to see, do I get any errors and debug? And I do see that we have some errors. So it's not happy with the get salary for whatever reason. Um, let's see, just one second. So now we get to debug a little bit here. Did I misspell get salary? Did I type in something different? Get salary, return base salary. Here you have employees.get name. Let me try and see if this works without the employees.get salary. So I'm just kind of debugging one one line of code at a time. And then we'll be able to troubleshoot this a bit. Okay, so something I'm seeing is that we're getting another error on the get name. Here's what the problem is. So when we, um, and I wanted to show you something. So if I use the one dimensional array that's already been created, this won't work with the enhanced for loop. If I want to use the original one dimensional array, I have to use a regular for loop and do the employees bracket index dot get name. Well, in this case, we have to make things more efficient. We use the enhanced for loop. So I need to use that copy dot get name. So let's go ahead and run it. Just make sure that it gets rid of it as it should. And there we go. So I got it running and program completed. So that's the main thing that I've seen a lot of mistakes on is people will bring out an enhanced for loop, which says for each element of employees, bring it over to copy. And that also matches the same class. And then when they run the say result and try to call the method, they almost always use the one dimensional that already exists. We can't do that with the enhanced for loop. It needs to be the copy version. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to that. So I'm gonna do copy dot get salary. And then do the final concatenation of the new line run it and just make sure that there's no errors. And of course it did copy dot get, of course I spoke salary wrong again. And it's a good idea to run these every time you write some block of code. Um, that way you can catch these syntax errors before it becomes a big problem. Okay, slow internet connection today, it's compiling. There we go, no errors, perfect. Okay, so 
I essentially have to do number one done. And in order to do, do to do number two, I have to actually print it to see if this is working correctly. So I'm gonna go to business runner, right? It says print the business objects. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do system.out.println. And it should be able to just print that tech company um, object that we created. Now, in case you're nervous about doing this, right? There's no tech company dot get name, tech company dot get salary. We don't need that. Why? Because we have it's an array of objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and print that and run it. Okay, so you'll notice that Ellis, Christina, Daphne, and David are all um, printed. Something interesting to note here um, is if you ever need help with the algorithm as you're doing code.org, especially as we get to more complicated lesson, you can go ahead and do all of this. I mean, it tell I mean, it actually tells you what to do here. Um, the only hard part here is you need to learn how to write the enhanced for loop. So, and there we go. Pass the test. Let me know if you have questions.